it's gonna be the uh, video clip because uh, uh, Diane Davis got the uh, uh, surgery last week. I get best doctor. Like I, I'm the second. What we get? This uh, Diane Davis is a uh, uh, what they call NASA land operate o- operation manager for a few years. And then, uh, so she and then uh, Jenny will give a brief introduction basically to how you can use the uh, satellite product, not the satellite data. This is the product that NASA produced and they have the mandate. So they are doing it for a long, long time. So they have the application that now like uh, for NASA firm about the forest fire information. Uh, everybody using it throughout the world, and they uh, a couple of years ago uh, for Thailand, but so in the region uh, for Southeast Asia region using this information to do the fire management. But they have a special version for uh, for Canada and US USA because of the mega fire. So they have to have the separate one more data. For but I try to encourage them. Yes, we have no budget. They, they're willing to help, happy. So every time they update, I'm the one check if it's good, bad, or it's really fine. Now they reflect on this. Uh, oh, okay. This, they reflect on the on, 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 on the presentation. Of, so it's going to be about like 25 minutes. And if you have any questions, just uh, give it to me, uh, talk with them all the time. And, and uh, they can improve, they can develop, but it has to be in their budget. But can be in line. And, and when they have budget, they will. Okay. Hello, and thank you for participating in this session, NASA Lance USA. NASA Fire Information for Resource Management System, or FIRMS, and NASA Worldview. My name is Jenny Hewson, and I will be presenting today along with Diane Davies. We both work on NASA FIRMS. Our colleague, Minnie Wong, works on NASA Worldview. Diane and I will give this presentation in two sections. Diane will present the first section on Worldview, and I will present the second section on firms. Both firms and Worldview are part of NASA's Earth Science Data and Information System, or ESDIS, project. While both Worldview and firms provide data and information relevant to disasters, Worldview provides this for multiple types of disasters, whereas FIRMS focuses on providing satellite imagery, active fire detections, and other data from multiple satellites to inform wildfire awareness. Good morning, my name is Diane Davis, and I am going to um, present the first part of this presentation, uh, which will be on NASA Worldview. There will also be a second uh, section to this, which is going to be on NASA firms, which will be presented by Jenny Hewson. So this part of the presentation has been compiled by Minnie Wong, who is a Worldview engineer. And the title of the presentation is NASA Worldview, explore the Earth from past to present with global satellite observations. So by way of an outline, we're going to look very briefly at the NASA Earth Science missions uh, NASA EOS DIS, uh, what is Worldview and Gibbs, what do Worldview and Gibbs provide, and some of the key features of Worldview. So let's dive straight in. NASA Earth Science Missions. So NASA works with um, a various international partners and has a fleet of satellites orbiting the Earth with sensors taking measurements and images. NASA also has instruments aboard the International Space Station, Um, aeroplanes, balloons, ships, and on land. And this comprises the Earth observing system. These global observations enhance our understanding of planet Earth by helping us to understand the interconnected processes and systems of this planet and identify changes, effects and changes um, that are both natural and human caused. 
So all of the data collected by NASA are free for all to use. NASA's data policy ensures that all NASA data are fully available, um, are available fully, openly, and without restrictions. NASA's Earth Observing System Data and Information System, or EOSDIS, is responsible for processing, archiving, and disseminating NASA's vast collection of data from Earth observing satellites, as well as the airborne and ground-based missions. And in total, there's over 70 petabytes of data. So Worldview and Gibbs, or the Global Imagery Browse Services, are the imagery, imagery visualization components of EOSDIS. So in this diagram on the bottom, you can see that data is um, collected by satellite and, and also obviously, um, as I mentioned, airborne and ground-based missions. And the data is sent to the distributed archive centers or science investigator-led processing systems for processing, archiving, and distributing data. Now, these centers also generate imagery um, and uh, vector data for Gibbs. Gibbs optimizes that imagery and vector data and openly serves it to any client via standard interfaces. So these clients include Worldview, um, Firms, as well as other web clients, GIS clients, and uh, scripts and utilities. So, taking a, so, so with so much data available, it's often difficult for people without specialized software to view the data or even have the capacity to download and, and store the data. So Worldview and Gibbs makes it easier for users to access earth science imagery. It aims to provide an intuitive interface to view and download imagery and download the underlying data via earth data search for further analysis. Worldview's code base is also open source and freely available for redistribution and modification. And so there are really three components as shown on this slide. Worldview is the open source web mapping application um, that enables you to interactively browse uh, NASA's global satellite imagery within hours of it being acquired, as well as imagery from the past few decades. Gibbs is the set of services, sort of on the back end, if you like, it provides fast and open access to over a thousand NASA imagery products for Worldview and other applications via standard based web services. And also available is Worldview Snapshots. So this is a lightweight tool for creating image snapshots in a variety of file formats from a selection of the most popular of NASA satellite imagery base layers and overlays. And that was specifically set up for users um, in low bandwidth areas or maybe users that are um, undertaking field work and don't have a uh, good internet access. So taking a deeper dive um, we'll, into what Worldview and Gibbs provide. Um, so imagery is available in four projections, geographic, as you can see here on the left, um, Arctic polar in the middle and Antarctic polar on the right hand side. It's also available in Web Mercator projection, but that's only through the Gibbs API. In terms of imagery and data, both raster and uh, vector, vector data are available. Uh, the spatial resolution uh, ranges from 30 meters to 7, 375 to 1 degree per pixel. And the temporal resolution varies from 10 minutes to daily, monthly, yearly, and others in between. And the latency, that's the time from satellite observation to it being available within Worldview, is uh, 40 minutes for geostationary, uh, approximately three hours for near real time, and uh, for many other uh, data sets, uh, that, that would be a longer um, latency. There are two types of raster imagery, opaque base layers that provide um, imagery as is. For example, on the left hand side, you can see the corrected, uh, the, the corrected reflectance true color imagery from VIRS, the VIRS instrument on the NOAA 20 satellite. And on the right hand side, you have an example of a transparent capable overlay. The, in this case, it's chlorophyll, um, also collected on the VIRS satellite, but this time on the SMPP. Uh, sorry, the VIRS instrument on the SMPP satellite. And these um, overlays can be changed, the thresholds can be changed, and also the, the color bar can be changed. Um, Worldview also supports um, the visualization of vector data 
These are static features such as points, lines and polygons um, and the associated metadata and attribute information can be viewed uh, for user analysis. So in this example, you can see the firms, uh, the fires and thermal anomalies data from the VIRS instrument on board uh, the NOAA 20 satellite. And this is the same active fire data that you view in firms, which Jenny will be talking about later on. So um, the, uh, the vector data uh, in, in, in Worldview is still being developed. So there are some additional features coming soon. So there will be some support arrow flow visualizations um, and inherent magnitude and direction. So that will be uh, coming soon. OK, so I'm just going to describe some of the features in Worldview. And, uh, and I'll illustrate some of these uh, through slides. Um, so firstly, uh, tour stories. These enable you to learn how to, work, how to use Worldview, as well as to visualize certain imagery layers and explore interesting uh, past natural events. And these are incredibly useful. I would highly encourage you to take a look at these if you are unfamiliar with Worldview. And I'll explain more about these on the next slide. Um, you can also create animations in Worldview. Uh, so these can be created and exported to, to view a particular event. You can compare imagery side by side. Uh, there's a function to be able to do that. You can also embed um, Worldview imagery onto your own web page. Um, there's also um, an event tracker. So you can look at a list of uh, natural events that have been curated by the Earth Observatory Natural Event Tracker. And I will um, provide a slide on this too. And then you can also download data from Worldview. So you can view the imagery. And if that's something that you think is, is going to be useful for your analysis, then there is an option to download that related data through Earth Data Search. So just briefly on uh, story tours, uh, you can get to these. When you first go to Worldview, uh, these are on your welcome screen. So there will be um, uh, that you can do a, a Worldview tour, but you can see here that there's um, uh, story tours on atmospheric rivers, assessing um, assessing flood water, something on the night lights from from NASA's black marble, uh, how to view the geostationary imagery, um, and then also the satellite detection of fire and all kinds of things. So definitely worth a look at this if if you're interested in a particular phenomenon and seeing which type of data and imagery is available for for understanding that and also just for getting a handle on the different features within Worldview. So the first one probably to start with is the introduction to, to Worldview Story Tour, and this is an example of that. And you can see that uh, the, the box on the top right, it's got an, a next button on, it will take you through the different steps to, to get the basics on Worldview. And this is an example of one of the story tours. This is the Atmospheric Rivers Story Tour. Um, so atmospheric rivers, um, there were a lot of atmospheric rivers in uh, 22, 2023 this year. Um, and so there's a story tour on this. If you um, want to add your own data and just uh, uh, explore for yourself on Worldview, you can use a layer picker. So once to, to get to this, once you've uh, clicked out of the story tours, you can click on the Add Layers button on the left-hand side, the orange button on the left-hand side, and you'll see this layer picker. And so the layers have been divided up into potentially useful categories. So there are um, two, three, well, four tabs along the top. The first one is Hazards and Disasters. So for example, if you're interested in air quality or dust storms, it will provide you with a list of data sets that are potentially useful for for looking, uh, digging deeper into that particular hazard or disaster. You can also um, look at uh, science disciplines, featured, um, there's a featured tab which looks at some of the newer data sets, as well as being able to look at the more recent data sets that you've viewed. The animation tool is, is particularly useful um, for demonstrating uh, an event. So in this case, if you were to go to this URL and uh, click on the the uh, the play tool you will see the eruption of the Hunga Tonga uh, volcano as it was captured by the GOES imagery um, a particularly neat uh, use of the imagery here but you can also use it to look at the progression of a tropical cyclone 
Um, and these animations can be captured and downloaded as a GIF and then shared uh, with other users. The comparison tool is another uh, particular favorite of mine. It enables you to compare imagery from two different dates or two sets of imagery from the same date or even two sets of imagery from different dates. So for example, if you wanted to look at the impact of flooding or fires um, or, or kind of vegetation growth, comparing the two images side by side and having this option to swipe between the two images is really very useful. So this is something that's fairly new. Uh, the Worldview team were contacted by various news agencies and other people who wanted to embed imagery, the Worldview imagery, into their application. So uh, this is now possible. There's um, a URL here which gives you uh, instructions on how to do this um, and some, some sample usage. But basically it shows you how to embed this into your web page. And there's also an option in the top right hand corner, I don't know if you can see that, which then will take users to, so you could, you could swipe within your web page, but then there's also an option to take users to Worldview to explore the data further. Uh, I mentioned earlier on the event tracker. So the events tab can be found on the top, uh, on the top of the sidebar. Um, so you can see it says events and uh, you have various options here. Once you open the event tracker, you'll be presented with the first 50 events from the past few months, but you can click on the blue filter icon to start narrowing down the events. So you can filter events by date, event type, and uh, the events go and the events in the current map view. Um, so you can, you can choose uh, events go back to the 1st of January 2000, though not all event types and categories have uh, events populated back to the 1st of January 2000. And um, these different event types include dust and haze, man-made sea and ice, sea and lake ice, severe storms, snow, volcanoes, watercolor and wildfires. And you can also uh, check the box to only list events in your current map view to further filter your search results. And once you click on apply, it will take you to that particular event. Um, and in this case, you can see that it's, it's um, a tropical storm. Um, this is actually a typhoon uh, from July 2021. And um, I don't know if you can see on the, on the chart here, but it's got um, little dots as well. So that shows you how you can um, track the storm over time. So that's a really nice feature. And the other great thing about Worldview is it's so useful for searching for data and uh, knowing, understanding which data you want to download. So by being able to visualize this data through imagery, you can uh, find uh, some the granules that you want to download. And then there's an option to download the data uh, through the Earth Data Search. So to do that, you click on the um, download icon, which is at the top. Uh, it's like a, a download arrow uh, next to the word data. And once you click that, it will give you the options to be able to download the data from, and it will take you through to Earth Data Search for the data set that you have selected. So that's just about the end of this worldview section um, of the presentation. So here are some URLs for you to explore further. Um, if you want to do, take a look at the Worldview tour or look at a tutorial or the Unearth Data uh, NASA Worldview webinar, the links are here. And um, here are some additional links which may be of use as well as a, a contact for general questions or comments. Um, and at this point, I'm going to hand over to Jenny Hewson who is going to uh, talk to you about NASA firms. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Diane. In this section, we will focus on NASA's Fire Information for Resource Management System or firms. The outline for this section is to quickly review the background on firms, then to share with you the recently released firms expanded user interface to then highlight several of the modes within the interface and to provide an overview of the additional tools and services available. 
In the early 2000s, the MODIS Land Rapid Response System was developed. It was developed at the University of Maryland in the USA in collaboration with the USDA Forest Service and NASA scientists. And it was developed in response to several events, including extensive wildfires that had occurred in the state of Montana. The launch of the Terra satellite in 1999 and the Aqua satellite in 2001, which both carry the MODIS instrument, also enabled data on active fires, for example, to be generated very quickly. This is called near real time. The MODIS rapid response system led to the development of the Fire Information for Resource Management System, or FIRMS, providing near real time remote sensing data and products on wildfires. FIRMS was transitioned to NASA's near real time system, or LANTS, in 2012. And since 2012, FIRMS has continued to develop adding a firm's US-Canada interface in 2021, for example, to complement the firm's global interface. Also, as the number of users of firms has increased, the diversity of users has also increased. Firms has many types of users, including scientists, researchers, decision makers, and the general public. So firms recently released an expanded user interface supporting many different types of users and needs and reflecting NASA open science, accessible, reproducible and inclusive open science. Let's explore firms and the expanded user interface. So again, the main objective is to support an increasingly diverse set of users. Additionally, the expanded interface increases the visibility and access to other firms' products and services. There are distinct interfaces for different user levels and different use cases, and an experimental mode that's in development for prototyping in-progress products. The expanded interface also enhances the ability to filter data, visualize data, as well as view data in multiple GIS systems. The main firm's interface includes an interactive fire map, which we'll focus on today, active fire data, where you can download active fire data from Modis and Beers, and Landsat, where available, for the last 24 or 48 hours or seven days in text, shapefile, or KML. Fire alerts to subscribe for your area of interest and receive alerts near real time or as daily or weekly summaries. Archive download, where users can access the full archive of Modus and Vias for an area of interest, as well as multiple web service options. Within the fire map, Users can access basic mode for new users and advanced mode for users familiar with firms, as well as burned area and smoke and aerosol modes. The experimental mode is in development and users can also access the firm's US Canada interface, as well as the fire alerts and download section. I'll quickly walk through a few of these, starting with the basic mode. The basic modes provides an introduction for new users to firms. It's easy to navigate and it contains the most used data and information. When one clicks on the fire map, it defaults to the basic mode. This is the interface of the basic mode. The interfaces of the burned area, smoke and aerosols and advanced mode will have a similar layout. The main map, a menu on the right, a location pool in, in the upper left, and a number of options along the bottom. In the basic mode, active fire data from the last 24 hours from multiple polar orbiting satellites, notably MODIS and VIAs, plus the Landsat active fire data where available, are automatically displayed. Users can access various overlays including administrative boundaries, protected areas, etc. There are also 
daily 250 meter spatial resolution true color composite images from Modus on Terra and Aqua and Vias on SMPP and NOAA 20 in this dynamic imagery drop down here. Users can use these options here to change whether they view this information for today, the last 24 hours, the last seven days, or use this calendar to select a specific day. And here's a quick example from the fires in Chile at the beginning of last year, 2023. There is a location tool in the upper left where one can type a location or enter coordinates of a location. We are looking at the VRVR region of Chile on the 1st of February 2023 and there are minimal active fires. In this screen, we are looking at the same region on the 3rd of February and there are many active fires visible. I've also turned on the MODIS True Colour Composite imagery from the 3rd of February, which is helpful as we can see the presence of smoke from the fires, as well as clouds in the northeast of the image. And if I select the time-based option on the menu within this bouncing red box, this gives an idea of when the fires were detected by the satellite. You can view this by hours or days since detection. This is the burned area mode. The main differences you will see will be in the menu. Also, access to each mode is available by hovering over these three horizontal lines by this red arrow. This will show you all of the modes and you select the one you want. I'm going to focus on three drop downs, harmonized Landsat Sentinel imagery, modus burned area and dynamic imagery. We are looking at an area in British Columbia, Canada that burned in May, June of last year. Again, I used the location tool to navigate to Donny Creek where the fire was. And we are looking at four weeks of active fire data in red from mid-May to the 12th of June. You can select to view anywhere from one to 31 days of active fire data. As I showed before, you can also view the active fires by time since detection. And if you select the custom mode from the menu, you can view by confidence as well as radiative, fire radiative power or FRP, the intensity of the fire during the satellite overflaps. Let's explore the area of land burned. Here we'll make use of the harmonized Landsat Sentinel imagery and the dynamic imagery. In figure two, I've turned off the active fires and I've turned on a Sentinel-2 true color composite image from the HLS imagery dropdown. There are four different HLS composites available in firms, true color and false color composites from Sentinel-2 and true color and false color composites from Landsat 8 and 9. These images have a spatial resolution of 30 meters. It's important to note that these images are dynamically generated and as such, they can take longer to display in firms. There's also a two to three day lag between the collection of the imagery by the satellite and their availability in firms. Today's the 30th of January, so imagery from the 27th of January and earlier is available. And because these satellites have a narrower swath width, Compared to Vias and Modus, it takes longer for these satellites to revisit the same spot on the Earth and complete coverage of the Earth. Between the two satellites, they revisit the same location approximately every five days. As you can see in figure two, this Sentinel-2 true color composite, the burned area of Donny Creek is not very distinct. It's tricky to delineate from the background. However, if we use the false color composite, 
which you can see in figure three, the burned area is much more identifiable and distinct. This is because of how burned areas appear in the shortwave infrared. In figure four, we are looking at the modus false color composite. The burned area is also very visible here. However, the modus false color composite has a spatial resolution of 250 meters. Again, the harmonized Landsat Sentinel or HLS imagery has a resolution of 30 meters. So if we zoom in, this is the modus imagery, the false color composite again, and this is the harmonized Landsat Sentinel imagery. You can really start to see the linear features such as roads, as well as the different burn characteristics compared to the modus imagery. The next figure, figure five, is the modus burned area product. This product can help inform the extent of an area burned. This is NASA's standard science product and it is available with a time lag of several months. You can see a significant amount of area burned in May. This is displayed as yellow in figure five and very little burn before May. The user can turn on and off the different months of the burned area product, change the opacity and color, or just show the outline of the burned area using the little buttons on the right. We know that much of the area burned in June, and we can confirm this area burned in June by turning on the active fires for June, as you can see in figure six. The smoke and aerosols mode. Here, I'll focus on the smoke and aerosols dropdown and the dynamic imagery dropdown. There are two aerosol index products within the smoke and aerosols dropdown. These are both from the OMP sensor on board SMPP. There is a specific pyrocumulonimbus layer which can highlight pyrocumulus events which are fire-induced thunderstorms. There is also an OMPS aerosol index layer. In addition to detecting and tracking the transport of smoke plumes from wildfires, the aerosol index layer is useful for detecting volcanic ash, as well as dust from dust storms in the desert. This is an OMPS aerosol index image from the 30th of September last year. In the Northern Hemisphere, there were high aerosol index values from the wildfires in Canada. Here is a zoomed in image showing high aerosol index values on the right side of the image in red from the wildfires in many regions of Canada. But there are also high aerosol index values off the coast of Mauritania. These high aerosol index values are from dust storms in the Sahara Desert and not from smoke. We can double check this with this modus corrected reflectance image over the Sahara and here you can see dust over the ocean. And here is the advanced mode. This is aimed at users who are familiar with firms and familiar with the data and information. This is a one-stop shop for existing users. There are many options for customizing the layers and information and enabling the user to build wildfire narratives. There are more options for how the data are displayed. You can see here in the top of the menu, data can be displayed for today, within the last 24 hours, the last three days, or the last seven days. There is also a sub daily option, which I'll show in a minute. There are more options for the user to turn on and off individual layers and to color code, etc. I want to quickly highlight some of the products. These include the Landsat Fire and Thermal Anomalies data. These data are available within firms within 30 minutes of satellite overpass, and they have a spatial resolution of 30 meters. They're available every 8 to 16 days between Landsat 8 and Landsat 9. They're currently available for the area displayed in Figure A. Another product are Ultra Real Time or URT Modus and Via's active fire data. 
while firms makes available global coverage of Modus and Via's active fire data within 30 minutes of satellite overpass, these ultra real-time data are available within five minutes and usually one to two minutes. These data are currently available with the area within the solid circles in figure B, but we're aiming to expand coverage. We've had many requests to add geostationary active fire data these are not NASA data, and they come from various spatial space agencies, NOAA, ESA, UMETSAT, and JAXA. Geostationary satellites orbit high above the equator at speeds equal to the Earth's rotation, so they can provide continuous coverage of an area over time. This figure shows the coverage we have from GOES-16 and 17 satellites covering North and South America, Covering Africa and the Middle East, we have Meteosat 9 and 10. And for the Southeast Asian and Australian regions, we have data from Himawari. Active fire detections from geostationary satellites occur every 10 to 15 minutes and are generally available in firms within 30 minutes. The spatial resolution of these data are much more coarse than, for example, VIA's. As you can see in the figure on the bottom left, these are VIA's 375 meter spatial resolution active fire data in red. The geostationary active fire data in ye yellow have a resolution of two kilometers sub-satellite. This means directly below the satellite. This spatial resolution also increases away from sub-satellite. It's important to highlight the geostationary active fire data are still in development and these data can have a higher number of false active fire detections. We prefer users use active fire data from the polar orbiting satellites. These are labeled recommended in the menu. The geostationary data should be used with caution, but for a big fire, they can be useful for looking at the trajectory of the fire. A quick example using active fire data from the Himawari geostationary satellite for a fire in Queensland in Australia on the 24th of October 2023 is displayed in these figures on the lower left. They show the temporal trajectory of the fire every four hours. The sub daily option from the menu in the top right can be used to view active fires every 10 minutes up to one hour or every hour up to 24 hours. Another handy drop down is the orbit tracks and overpass times. This drop down includes the daily orbit track path and overpass times in UTC for the polar orbiting satellites included in firms. The list is on the left here. These can be used to identify the anticipated time that a particular satellite will overpass a particular geographic area. A few of the notes. Throughout firms, a learn hat is available from every mode to explain what is in that mode. Little eye symbols throughout the modes provide more information on each data layer. Half circle symbols enable the user to change the opacity and color of each layer in many of the modes. And there are also extensive tutorials, frequently asked questions, and more resources accessible throughout. For users who would like to ingest firms data into their software, browsers and tools, firms has developed added utility, including web services, which are accessible here from the main firms interface. These provide several ways to get firms data and using multiple GIS, QGIS, ArcGIS, Google Earth Engine, etc. Users can explore each of the services listed here. At the bottom is access to tutorials and examples. This is the tutorials and examples page. There's guidance on ingesting firms WMS or WFS into QGIS 
ArcGIS Desktop Online and Pro and others, as well as access to the blog and YouTube tutorials. And the newest edition accessible at the bottom of the tutorials page is the Fire Data Academy. This has information on using Python to download data sets. And if you don't have Python, Google offers a virtual Python environment called Google Colab. Thank you for listening, and I will leave you with these resources. It's an overview of what they buy. You can put the request and then they buy them. The latest one is block polar orbit of time. That alert that I was Uh, if you have any question, uh, just let me know. I'll, I'll always talk with them. Or any request. Uh, okay, uh, for the next talk, it's uh, going to be from New Caledonia, since it's here. So we, yes. Yeah, just uh, one question curiosity uh, can we get uh, all the presentations uh, are you supposed to get all presentation as I later yes to be Just up in the website I upload it now with the sketch you can download them some of them you can but I don't see it in the website yet so because it's a different kind of, it's interface but different server okay. but uh, later we will uh, put, put all of them up in the program yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be uh, usually a PDF format, but uh, some, like, uh, if they have a, uh, a movie thing like this, but the problem is the, the space. This one is like almost 300 meg, and because of the, the talking, the recording, so, but it sketches around only 50, so I cannot upload. I only upload it uh, as a, a PDF. You get all, you get all, but uh, take time to collect because some speaker like Marcus, yes, they already are by my side of Black Long Body. They are the same. Oh, you Ah, okay, with them, so they have to, yeah, right. <laughs> okay, uh, now I'll be moving a uh, little, uh, little bit to the, the real world. That's uh, for uh, um, fire control, how they doing it in the New Caledonia, France, slash France way. So, <laughs> Captain Bruno will come uh, up here and then uh, tell us uh, what he's doing there in New Caledonia. Please. Of course, you already have that fire with it. So, okay, you have like a half an hour, give me 10 minutes. So I can do mine. Thank you, Chai. So I'm uh, the captain Bruno Kitosi. I'm, uh, I'm uh, the uh, fire chief of the city of Gambia in New Caledonia. I'm a fireman for 33 years now, and uh, what I'm going to share with you is the feedback of what of what we are doing in my country since uh, now 10 years when we use all the data that you bring here. Um, do I have to say that uh, I arrived uh, on, this, on, on Monday, I discover all the things that everybody here does. It was a bit uh, stratospheric for me. And uh, as I told you, I'm the guy who run after the fire on the field. Okay, So uh, I want to share this because uh, I have another particularity since I'm French. But I also have uh, another passport. I was born in Vanuatu. It was a French and British condominium. And uh, what I did in my city in Dambia, I also shared it with my 
collect in Vanuatu in Port Vila, and it does the same. So that system works on two countries. Uh, the, the, the point is two small country from the South Pacific. And I want to share this with you because, as I told you, it's a feedback. And that, uh, I know that it works. So uh, we will start by a bit of uh, graphy, of course. A bit of history, the city of Dambéa, my city, what fire background. Uh, excuse me for my English, because maybe uh, I'm French. So uh, in New Caledonia, everybody knows what's New Caledonia. Uh, we, the story of the fire fire service began after World War II. The American left a few trucks uh, because it's from New Caledonia that uh, the, the the first base is. It's from New Caledonia that all the U.S. Army forces went through the South Pacific to go to Japan. It was the the uh, 1925 well, nowadays. So here we are, as you see, uh, you can leave me this here. At about two hours of French from Sydney. Yeah, two hours. Yes, from Sydney. So, um, 400 kilometers long, 80 kilometers large. Uh, the fires, the fire stations are up. So, the fire station are here. Red. So you can have 50 or 100 kilometers without any fire station. So down there, my city, we have 35,000 people. 38% uh, of the present are 20 years. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a young city. We also have um, lots of agricultural area and uh, the biggest concern and development zone of France. Uh, when I came in Dambia in 2004, we were 14,000 people. 20 years after, 38,000 people. So it's huge at the scale of New Caledonia, of course. So this is my city. So we are by the sea. The city is between the sea and the mountain. It's important for the bushfire. So uh, the mayor, well, told me uh, my terms is six years. So the fire service works under the command of the Lord Mayor. Uh, we do all the current business. I mean, when the, the firehouses or the car accident or what, all, all the current things that the fire station does, it's under the command of the mayor. If the crisis has to go up, we go, the mayor go to the president of the province, and then all the reinforcements are coming from the president of the province. So he told me, okay, my term is six years, so I want you to take care of the Northwest sector from 2017 to 2019, and 2020 to 2022, Southeast sector. The river cuts the town in two, South is more urbanizing than the North. This is my city, as I told you. And we have then the, the, the Dambéa River. We also have flood. So the flood are very dangerous because it cuts the north from the south and the north doesn't communicate with the south. So we have during El Niño the floods earlier and during El Niño the bushfire earlier. So the historiography, terrestrial device, aerial device, information, the regulation. Determine sensitive area in order to prioritize action. How? September, we practice road maneuver, off road driving, forest fire theory. October, practical maneuver, isolated vehicle or several traps. Cartography, risk zoning, then topographical analysis. And here is the moment when we need all your data. All the things that we saw yesterday and this morning are used at this moment. The cartography, risk zoning, then topographical analysis, contact with land owners, of course, because uh, the bushfire are, are, are in direct concern, uh, concern directly the, 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 the land owner for cattling or agricultural purpose, of course. And uh, 
after that, we diagnose the postfrontality uh, executable by bleeds, the creation of forest fire trail specimen nurse, and repertorization on cards. That's the biggest point, because as I told you, uh, we need this data once it's an accident, twice it's a coincidence, but three times it's a point of vigilance. And here is the point. So, of course, huh, there's nothing better than the field. We can stay in the office as long as we want, but on a certain moment, sorry. We need to go on the ground just to make recognition, of course. Uh, and uh, we put it on the map and we do it with the landowner because they're on their, they're on their, they're on their own land. They know the land better than us. And they also have the history because everybody remember when, well, a few years ago, the fire came by the south and when we looked it here and well. And we do fire breaks as well. So I do it with the technical service of the municipality. So uh, generally, it's the frontier of the two properties. The landowner says, OK, uh, is my neighbor, is the limit of my property. I want you to make the fire break here. So like that, it will stop the fire. And uh, this is uh, the, the thing that it's a feedback as well, because uh, sometimes, um, you have to make the fire breaks according to the topography or according to the limit of the property. As you know, the question of winds and etc. Et and you do this two or three months before the bushfire season. And here is the, 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 the other point. Uh, as we said uh, earlier, the data that we collect can give us all the sensitive points that we have on the whole array. As I told you, we picked up all the data. We get, we do the historical, uh, we go to the archives, and all oh, here, it burns three times in 10 years. Here, it burns uh, five times in four years. Then, we have to be vigilant at this place. And that's the history that tells us that. So we have now our vigilance area by collecting the data and getting and very, very, and being very uh, uh, careful with the archives. And as we see, as I told you, it's a feedback. So this is my city. Mondor, Numea, and Paita are my neighbors. We see that we all have the same number of fire. We see that we need to extinguish 20 fire, 82 firefighters, to extinguish 18 fire, 154, etc., etc. And we see that for the burn surface, we have 12 hectares, 49 hectares, 16 hectares, and 180 hectares. Because here, we use all the data. We use, uh, we go to talk to the landowners. So we, we talk with the landowners, etc., etc. The superficies are two times less than elsewhere. And that's the official figure of the government. So the method, so now we, we were on the ground, now we can go upstairs, we can say. Uh, the IRL device, how we do that? Well, we stay, we stay on our sensitive area because we know that here is the problem. Otherwise, you have to cover the entire area 365 days a year, it's not possible at all. It's not possible at all. So we have to create four water supply points, partnership between city, province, and government. Nondoué Val Suzon uh, defends the border with the neighboring town of Faïta. Route du barrage, protection of the dam where the capital drones its water. We have a dam 
and this dam gives water to the capital. The capital is Noumea, and we have about 160,000 people who live in Noumea. And Tongwe defends the very urban area, goals, the helicopter spins are plus more or less four minutes, 15 spins per hour, at plus Seven an hour and plus ten ten minutes six minutes per hour. So this is important when we talk about area forces, aerial device. When we talk about bushfire, closer the the the, the water point is more you will have you will uh, efficient will be with your helicopter. And that's it. As I told you, we still have our sensitive zone. The same as we, you know? and we put the aerial point where the helicopter can take his water. And you do this uh, because the helicopter. You have to imagine that in our small country, you have one helicopter. You don't have two. You don't have three. You don't have four. You have one. And if there's another fire somewhere else. This helicopter will go somewhere else because the whole French strategy is to attack the beginning, the the birth, the, the birth fire. I mean, what, what what can I explain to you? the French? The French says, "Okay, here we have a fire. This fire will grow. We will put all our forces there. Another way, another, another place. There's another fire will uh, will grow, and we will take off all the." forces that we have here to extinguish this one because like that we won't have two big fires but only one so the whole strategy is to attack the burn fire the, the fire that begins even if there's another fire who's already uh, going on and with this with this we know that if the water is in the middle of the dangerous zone. So the helicopter will be much more efficient because it's the way that you reduce with the, um, we, uh, well, the hydrographic field, you follow the river. And where there's a river, you just create a point where the helicopter can drag it away. And so, as I said to you, we have the same number of fire, and as I did, we only need the four times the helicopter where, uh, where somewhere else, then 18 times, five times, and nine times. So like that, I'm sure that uh, what the, my helicopter will come, it will be efficient because he, he has the water near him. The information, preventive patrol, on the road up to the dam, fire watch during hot season, update of our environmental protection regulation for my fire school and association. Okay. So when it's summertime, we said to the we do this. Let the road free for the rescue people. No 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 camping fire. Don't drop your cigarettes and clean around your house. And always be careful during the hot season. And that's the flyer that we give to the people. Um, and we watch with our colleague from the police and the fire service as well. They're all together. Okay. Because this one is to prevent and this one is not to prevent. But the both work together, they go on pair. And the mayor, okay, against the struggle, well, he takes a municipal arrêté, which is the law, he said, okay, uh, I don't want anyone to make any father, any fire during this period. And if you break that, it's a fine of 1,000 euro. So, uh, $1,000 per hour and per truck. It works. It works. Okay. 
well, we all know this, is the mitigation of the risk. And uh, this is some example. As I told you, this is the, the, the topography of New Caledonia. And uh, the firemen always have against him the topography and the wind. And it's very difficult because uh, when there's a fire, uh, the guy has to walk about 30 or 45 minutes to reach the fire. And they're not on the flat field, but they're on the vertical plane. And that's pretty, pretty hard. It means that the decision that you take at 8 o'clock is not worth at 8.30 because the fire runs. So you have to be very, to, to anticipate a lot. And we work, we, uh, we, we work like uh, in the U.S. with the Forest for, Fire for Commando, I guess. Uh, uh, how do you call them? The guy that you drop on the helicopter on the mountain. Okay, uh, yeah. yes, smoke jumpers, yes, but it's the same strategy. Oh. Here we are. Thank you for listening to me. And uh, and I really want to, 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 to thank Chai. I, I come from Australia. I know. I know this, but um, what, what's the most common source of the fire? The common source of the fire is the man in New Caledonia, uh, the Melanesian people, the locals. Uh, uh, they have a very um, uh, how can I say this? It goes with the agricultural calendar. You understand what I mean? So that's the first point. And the thing is, uh, they forget what the elders teach them. Uh, so I, what I want to say is, before, they were all cleaning the area, and they put all the grass in the middle, they light the matches, and okay. Now they just light the matches, and just to use this area, they will burn the entire road. And they forget all this. And now we try to teach them back what the elders told them, what they forgot. And we also have to say that uh, it's, it's a tradition. The fire is a tradition. So it's not uh, good or bad. It's cultural. That's it. But in, once we said this, okay, we won't let our country burn as well. So we have to do it for something. What I, show, what I try to share with you is uh, I'm, the f I'm the fire chief for this city. Uh, as I told you, uh, 20 years ago, there were, there were only 14,000 people. Now we have 35,000. And I cannot let this happen again because the fire runs. Uh, we cannot we cannot just see and sad and just putting our hands like that. It's not possible. So the mayor tell me what 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 can we do? And then I propose this to him. We we uh, work four four three or four months before the full fire season, and that means that when the fire season is here, we are ready. And uh, that works. It costs nothing. It's just good sense. Uh, you have to use the satellite data, of course, because it's the history. But everybody has a map. Everybody has a compass. Everybody has a, a truck. Uh, everybody has an owner. And I put all this, and uh, I share now this with you because I know that it works. And we did it to the country. Thank you very much. Short question, yeah. Uh, how many firefighters are there in your city? One short question. Another question is, was there any casualty by fire? So, uh, the New Caledonia, as I told you, 400 kilometers long, 80 kilometers uh, large. We are 700 firefighters. Uh, if we compare to France, I mean, with the same uh, scale, the, reach, the same region, we are four times less four times less. I am under my common 80 firefighters, 20 professional and 70 volunteer. 
Remy that you see here is the ex-president of the firefighter board of New Caledon. So uh, he's a very, very, very important person back at home. Uh, but the thing, at home. But the thing is, uh, as I told you, the story of the fire service begins after the World War II, so we are very young. That's something we have to put in our minds. It's not the same as France. The fire service in France starts 200 years ago. But now, uh, the, thing, the other point is, uh, the New Caledonia has a specificity. It's not a French colony, it's a territory of overseas. What does it mean? It means that the um, security civil is, it depends on New Caledonia, not of France. France keeps the, the regalian uh, competence, money, justice, army, police, but all the rest, education, health, rescuing, is depending on New Caledonia. New Caledonia is uh, known because it's uh, an entire place of nickel. New Caledonia works with mining. And uh, that's why well, we, have now, we are now responsible of our own uh, country, even if we depend on France. It's not a French region, it's not a French department, it's a country or overseas depending on France. And yes, we had casualty as well. Three years ago, one guy died, his name is Hyper Confiné, one guy died on the fire. As at the moment I told, I'm talking to you, we have a fire who uh, started three years ago, uh, from three days ago. We already burned 600 hectares. And we have reinforcement from France who came to help us because uh, uh, we are just exhausted. Uh, two, two weeks ago, the president of the government of New Caledonia says the bushfire are, are, are now at the level of uh, national crisis. So everybody wants to know what happens about bushfire. We have two big examples, Australia and New Caledonia. Hi, this is Tokir from Pakistan. Uh, you have said cultural fire. So uh, we are suffering the uh, same thing uh, like cultural fire during winter season. Uh, we have uh, done a lot of plantation and uh, all of it uh, get uh, destroyed, the fire. And uh, once I get uh, hurt by it. So have you ever tried uh, something like early smoke detectors or thing like Vesta or uh, any uh, advanced technology things? Uh, well, what we are doing is, as I told you, we go and see the archive, the data. We know where are the sensitive area. And you have to work on the sensitive area. You put uh, a point of water for the helicopter. You put the fire watch. You put the fire break. You will have fire anyways. So now the question is, how come, what, how will I do? to minimize the superficies. And that's the only thing you have to think. Because you will out the fire anyway. Uh, you, can, you, can you can put a policeman every, uh, at, at the same. The people will out the fire anyway. We all agree with this. Uh, so uh, we are living on the area which is actually uh, situated on LOC. So uh, uh, first of all, we don't have helicopter. And if, if we have, uh, it's not possible to use helicopter. In that area, because LOC line of control. So okay. uh, uh, I am looking uh, for some cost effective and uh, effective solution. Yeah, also, you know, uh, we said uh, water tank, water tank. A water, uh, water tank is a good solution. I mean, uh, as I told you, the, the purpose is the fire will be here. The fireman, what, what is a fire? It's just combustion, and to extinguish, you need water. That's it. That's the point. Trying to talk about the the, the technology, of being that the of the smoke. All these are tools. We, okay. we are trying. You understand? Yes. All yes. these yes. are tools. Yes. An yes. helicopter is a tool. Yes. A drone is a very expensive tool. A satellite is a very very expensive tool. But yes. you need the guy on the ground. No, but that's the point. That's why I was telling you this morning. For me, it's very stratospheric. <laughs> Okay, He's okay. doing IoT and trying to get location of the fire. 
Okay, but, I will. Uh, it's much more de- more detailed than that. When you go into the brain, go into the forest, and you can start to understand them. Uh, you understand a little bit more the solar cell and the low cost center. Okay, try to find where the fire. But in terms of our uh, our firefighters, like like you go brain, we need to know the real location. Because when you go to the mountain, you go up to the wrong ridge, you have to come down and go up again. So the accuracy of the location of the fire is very, like, Sunta uh, from Nepal, like near Pakistan or Afghanistan. But if you get the wrong location, it's uh, quite difficult to go up and down. So this is also the question that you can cannot say that our accuracy is quite the wrong ridge. <laughs> and not so that's just one thing but the system yes they have the camera system uh, Indonesia using it uh, the AI system that can cover 35 meter radius but the cost probably is a thermal camera uh, with the high resolution camera and working like uh, it can detect 35 uh, can detect fire like, I don't know four strand if it passed because of the thermal sensor. But with the, this thermal camera it's already out of it. The, the problem is just the expensive that uh, you need an uh, internet connection like this to you need to have good internet connection to send the data to the AI system in the cloud. Calculate something like that. So it's like kind of a difficult also. People are thinking that uh, using IoT is easy. I have been doing it how many years now? <laughs> For his PhD too. Yeah, so how many years? It's not that easy. Yeah, we think that, oh, put the smoke detector and then done. Like, we try with the uh, the the heat signal, like the MIT came to Thailand. 30 years try to put this uh, heat sensor in the forest and try to detect star or something. Not really. Like you said, they will light a fire. If they know this area, they go further, <laughs> deeper, something like that. But it's good. Good to research on that and improve. But uh, it has to be the same. Uh, get it accurately uh, for the for a five profession, we have to do as we as possible. So the French strategy is educated. That's why they have, when you look at how you didn't come yesterday with the strong experience, they have the plane flying, flying during the day all the time. In front of so the batch by like, yeah, I think like 12 hours all the time. And they have the, another layer on the top monitor on Order and then they have the like helicopter on the ground. So it costs a lot different. But yeah, because in France, where you are, it's the same. It's the same thing. Uh, the location around the Mediterranean Sea, you have only people are living here. You cannot have bushfire in the middle of the residence. You cannot have bushfire in the middle of the houses. So they need to strike fastly and strongly. It's rare to have both together. You can have fast, and you cannot. You cannot have strong, and that's the politic in France. That was I was saying to to him. Here, you in Pakistan, or I guess in Vanuatu or in New Caledonia, we are not that rich. It's a fact. Okay, so we have to do something. And the thing is, my point, and I'm saying this with 33 years of experience of a fire, is. Determinate your vigilance area. And where you have the, the vigilance, you don't let go there. You just focus on this all the time. And you have the beginning of an answer. And that works. And I know that works because I'm doing this since 10 years now. The mayor trust me about this. And now I'm not on the field level, I'm on the low. I work with the municipal advisor, with the municipality. To take, um, to make the arete, to make the, the, the law, to make the regulation. And I'm at this level now. 
and all the, 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 the other things, satellites, drones, they are tools. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I said, oh, one additional thing with the Hawaii thing, fire. Maybe you heard of the, the, the fire in Hawaii. Because of the climate change, the typhoon, uh, 1,200 kilometers away, make the wind go over 100 kilometers per hour. That is really bad. Then look, this is typhoon category 4, but 1,200 kilometer away from Hawaii in the Pacific Ocean. That suck suck the the the, or the 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 humidity and the wind making the wind speed in Hawaii Island that's I don't remember the name, but uh, go over hundred hours. And now it's a uh, climate change something. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, okay, last, but uh, okay, we have five minutes. I'll show you this is already online. So <laughs> uh, I'll show you it's just the, uh, this one. oh no, not the wrong one. It's just the extension of what Diane and the Jenny are saying. So I just uh, this is like free and open. Uh, it's the geoinformatics that we can use online uh, and helping you. Sometimes you save a lot of money, like firm. That I have been doing it with firm since two thousand I don't know four. And they the Maryland, the other part. We even have a five member for for Thailand, Thailand five member. But they develop now into the, the firm system, and then the people can use. It's uh, free of charge. And uh, some people, they get the project and then spend a lot of money. Just uh, getting the data from, from, from NASA, from NISA, and then we visualize it. Start the application. It's already there. You don't have to <laughs> pay for it. Just uh, I know how to use it. So this is like a list that I make to for you in terms of the fire, smoke, and hydrology that you can use for free first. And then you know if you need more. You need more capability to, uh, of your area. So you can that. Yeah. Quickly, just... Uh, so it's just fire informatics. They have hydroinformatics now. We have five smoke. And this, like, free, free of charge data. Uh, I maybe I show a little bit and then go to this is what we do. Uh, then this is the, the global network for the uh, uh, five global network. Now, this will move to FAO. Uh, or it's not uh, officially moved to FAO. So we are part of it in at the uh, upper ASEAN wildlife by special region. So this is HII. You heard about uh, Hydroinformatics Institute for from the state that uh, Dr. Jack talking about. This is just the history introduction. I worked here. <laughs> so this is the place of other parts like this. Of three <laughs> doing yeah so this is nasa that's uh that's uh diane explained how they do it now they they can make it faster so noah i don't know the new technology that they can transfer the data very quick up there. so you you used to wait when when the satellite comes you have to wait uh longer it used to be like two three hours that they is to the data but now it's 50 55 minutes but now they aim to be 30 minutes. How you transfer like terabyte of data up to space and can get the product. So now it's changing. But I don't know. This I know from Noah. The guy from Noah has told me that they can do it. 
So this is the list. Ah, well, same. Just I go in quickly. It's the same thing. If you look at it before, it's the introduction. Ah, this is another system that I talk. I told you that uh, Winfred Schroeder, he is the one who wrote the fire code. NASA using the same code. Good friend of mine. So he, we can get faster, faster active fire from 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 Winfred Schroeder. But the problem is not uh, free. I mean, it's not. Just fill in your your email address. In it's not easy to use. You let you have to let him know that you want to receive. So currently, there are uh, there's a uh, for ASEAN only and Nepal. Uh, other other country not. Yet. This is like a special channel because NASA can deliver it uh, like one and a half hour. As I said, because we need to control fire as soon as possible. So we would like to have the data as soon as possible. So the fastest way that they can do is uh, as fast as U.S. Forest Service can get. So I said, okay, we did it for Thailand. We did it, and we did it for ASEAN. Now, Nepal, because of the APAN meeting, APAN 55, we had and then Sunta was there talking, so I was asking him, well, please do it for Nepal. Now Nepal. Happen. But this can be expanded uh, because he is the one who controls the system. Uh, example, another system is the same satellite, different product. This guy trying to detect ground fire, which is, uh, it, it, yeah, so it's different. They use different algorithms, same data. So they, he, uh, this, this one can detect like a, a ground fire better than. The common one. It's a different algorithm. So you can access that camera. Now everybody change to the camera much easier. So from the fire wash tower. So now they use camera and AI system to 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 alert you. So you can go, but the problem is the fall alarm. Okay. Because sometimes area is just not to go. Not simply as that budget or anything. Uh, play a role. This is like uh, smoke informatic, like uh, Jenny, Diane, show it that uh, they have the aerosol product daily. Daily. Satellite pass every day and they produce this. NASA, NASA also uh, do, uh, do it. Uh, the different we saw this before. And then ESA also have a special satellite, uh, Sentinel 5, that decided for this. For the smoke detection for the aerosol detection. So the sensor is like that. Also free, online. You can use it and come every day as well. You know, but uh, you have to know how to access it. And then this is a, a Sentinel Hub, like I said. One Sentinel Hub is uh, funded by European Space Agent, uh, fund, funded by e European Agent, that they have this uh, uh, free of like Laurent yesterday saying that the emergency system. So this is the same thing, but uh, distribute the data differently. Uh, because uh, the smoke have different databases. Download. At least the top one, three of them, top one, one from NASA, one from uh, Copernica system uh, in Europe, and the other one is from UCA and INCA that they, they provide. Diff uh, of course, the value are different, but calculation. Now, they use the same data, but the problem is the calculation they have. So it's slightly different, but the trends are the same. And okay, now the new guy uh, for NASA, uh, he using the satellite, and now he can detect smaller fire, add it up. So he said his emission used to be 100, now it has to be like 40% more. So he's collecting data. Uh, when you include small fire, before you cannot really detect it with the notice. One kilometer, but now they develop the uh, the algorithm to detect smaller fires, so they can include that in the calculation. And it, the emission, like for example, carbon emission, about forty percent. We will recalculate uh, this. Uh, this one. This one. He will calculate it, uh, recalculate everything. Uh, Udo Vadova, 
being uh, a Dutch guy, not uh, not American Dutch guy. And this is just an example also the Copernicus program that you can download. And they have the simulation for you to forecast and know where the smoke gonna go. But according to ECMWF, so the European uh, forecast forecast uh, service that they're doing for Europe. So uh, yeah, this is I uh, just I uh, using by working with the uh, uh, Mark Tellington in the in Copernicus atmospheric monitoring services. We use this, we use the data to do the daily and monthly the season of uh, carbon emission of fire. Okay, we can do this. Have a R code to do and this is you can compare daily sorry daily for twenty two years of data. Daily that uh, the system can calculate. But this is detected from satellite to understand the satellite is not like when Jenny said geostationary, that's from uh, Martin Wooster, uh, you, uh, professor. He using him already. His system is in the, in, what is it? Proto, 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 gave. <laughs> proto gave, I don't know, uh, institute. And he gave it to me. I said, I cannot visualize it every day. And uh, Diane is the group as well. That I should confirm so you can look at it. But the problem now is that the accuracy. That's why in film said beta. Last year we tested it. It's good for Australia because a big fire is can in our can or in Indonesia or like in the US. But in our area for uh, Upper Asia, the fire too small. So with the two uh, two kilometer resolution of thermal band of Himawari, uh not. Uh, really detected. Uh, so still, but uh, like according to Subway Sun, uh, the Himawari 10 and 11 improved it by copy what the 416 and 417 what the wave sensor, one kilometer thermal band of the best, they will copy that and launch it. Uh, the new algorithm is better for the client. Because Himawari currently, the thermal sensor decide to only detect the cloud temperature, not the surface temperature. So it's huh. right. Okay. Just uh, at the end, I'll skip to the end, and then this you can it will be. Uh, you can look at this later. Uh, but uh, just to show that you can do it for free in the data. Ah, this one is a. Uh, you ask. This is a. Yeah, low cost sensor. Uh, we have this uh, low cost sensor to try to. But mainly detect the uh, air quality. But is the standard is the problem. Researcher in Thailand arguing that like to use, uh, they would like to use the low cost sensor instead of the main station. But the the quality not the same. WMO but cannot do that. So you can tell you can use it as a friend at that particular time. But to use it uh, as a scientific standard, you cannot. So this is example of Thailand side that they are giving funding for different uh university to do the local low cost sensor and see a lot of them, and I heard one one ministry got gonna build uh, already install another eight thousand low cost sensor, but quality is really not that not that high. That's also the problem. And then uh this is purple air actually people buying this. And install and you can access. You know? Okay, this also from ECMWF that they can doing this uh, free data and forecast. So you can use a fire danger rating system from this system, and they forecast. They can tell you how dangerous the high early one. So this is for free as well, and, but the resolution is better because they do globally. But in Europe, go down to one. Because they, they are, this system is in Europe. Copernicus is an European Union. And that's those people they pay. So you can use eight kilometers 
but uh, they have the forecast like uh, like this forecast here, long range. So to at least you have in mind what's gonna happen, like what happened to the El Nino in the in New Caledonia in in Australia on the top. I think like rain <laughs> flooding. <laughs> it did follow. Yeah, it's flooding and then it's dry. A lot of fire. It's like countries to trouble. So this is free system, okay, that you can access. Uh, like this, you can do the, the, the forecast here, it can, can have the uh, calendar for you. Okay? Uh, it's like seven day forecast. At least you understand what's going on. Or what's gonna happen. This is for Thailand system, but Yun Yong do it here, and then the Royal Forest Department operate. We, we, are, we will update this system. The working Canadian Forest Service will update because uh, it turned out to. So we have to change, but we will. But we're asking uh, this is for Lao, India, Odia, and Vietnam. But uh, yeah, the system now have to do, but have to wait for Canadian Forest Service. Uh, unfortunately, this year they have okay. a lot of fires, so they. They're not free, they were busy. They're busy. So it's fine, I understand. Uh, open forest can do uh, some, it's free, can do uh, some calculation of the burn area and plotting. You don't need GIS. This is online. You can make graph and that. So from the satellite data, more is uh, 23 years of, of data. That just quickly that you can do. So you can compare and you can upload your shape file to any area you want. So that is that, that's helping a lot. So then have to go to like download the satellite data, put into the GIS software, analyze it, calculate it. This is you just upload and you just click uh, and apply and it will come. And this is the system that uh, we use in Thailand. Highwater.net is the national, uh, national water center, hydro, 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 and yeah, this is inside. And of course, uh, windy, everybody noticed and very good. First, when they started, they only have wind. I love, I love the good, correct. And then visualization, very, very good. And they start to add, add, add. And eventually, I don't know, five, Four five years ago, they got three hundred uh, from no Norway government to put Copernicus by like ECMWF data in their system. So now people love to use the visualization, and it's free. Okay. Uh, Zoom. This is another one. This is near real time when the the hurricane happened. It follow typhoon or hurricane with the satellite. Follow that. So you can go to the assume dot earth, and then you follow. I I like this one. It's like something happened. You can see because the geostationary satellite every five or ten have image, and this website will update, 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 and you see the moon. Ah, okay. And this is another one that they come up for the for the flood. Global flood people that uh, you know. this is also good to, to look, explore, and then uh, use the old system, but now it just is worldview, uh, just the uh, then slide back. Uh, they, the funding they ran out of funding, ran out of funding now. Finally, after since we had the big flood. Just agree last year. They just agreed to put all his group. So it can now, and this is from there, this is the uh, picture of Maryland. Quickly with the motives, like daily, quick detection of the flood, then get the higher, higher resolution. So this is all free. You can look at it later. But okay, let's uh, go to the the last slide, final word. 
this is my thought. <laughs> this is my thought. Uh, a climate change here. Yeah? Uh, people say we can stop it. I don't know. Not probably not. But uh, building for the resilient way that we have to And for us as well. And uh, even we are in different world, different country, not work together. I don't know. <laughs> I keep asking. Please try to work together. Have and survive. But to stop disaster to come, it's already happened. Just the way that, uh, like I talk, Mother Earth is adjusting. Just like left, right. Don't know. Please, you know, if you and we just work together. Just uh, open. Sorry, go over that. Yeah, fifteen. So, I have no question that uh, we have to get ready for uh, uh, another special talk, uh, Professor Ninomiya, uh, on the sixth floor, and then start dinner and that time. Okay, please go up. And nobody come up to update his presentation. He changed it. I said, come at four o'clock. I have to go up and change it and come down. <laughs> Thank you for coming. And tomorrow, if you have time, we have separate uh, working group, three working group. Uh, first in the morning, the first session, the same group, disaster mitigation. Then just come and talk and discuss how we work, how to try to work together. Uh, the second one going to be open and sharing and the uh, second session. Also the same thing. We want to discuss and talk, not just make it simple. But next time, so we try to change that at the afternoon for agriculture. Let me try to work it out. One and a half hour, 19, talk and see how we get funding together. We can try to get something together. And three, uh, tomorrow, we'll have a big session. And Thursday, we like the queue, open queue. <laughs> we have the training. From the Atlanta, uh, uh, Taiwan, I don't know, okay. morning. Three, three tomorrow, stop by. Thank you. Please go, please go up to <laughs> yeah, the opening ceremony. <laughs>